I'm going to hear from our professor who is zooming in all the way from Kentucky, from the University of Louisville. He's an expert. He's written several books on cybersecurity, computer science, and artificial superintelligence. Ah, Roman, I see you on the screen. I hope you're hearing us. Tell us, can we control superintelligence? Over to you. No. The answer is no. I'll tell you why in a few minutes. That's fine. So you can share your slides or talk to us whenever you're ready. Let's do the slides. Uh, Connor did a great job with uh, his presentation. Let me see you one second here. Share screen. In the meantime, we can see the covers of some of your books in the background. Artificial yes, absolutely. intelligence, safety and security and artificial superintelligence. We're now having a slight technical issue as the technologist has found the slides. Great. Okay. Yeah, that's the hardest part. If I can get slides going, the rest is easy. Okay, so uh, I didn't know what Connor's going to talk about. Uh, he did a great job. He's a deep thinker and covered a lot of important material. I will cover some of the same material, but I will have slides. And uh, I will slightly take it to the next level where I may make Connor look like an optimist. So let's see how that goes. Uh, to begin with, let's look at the past. Well over a decade ago, predictions were made about the state of AI based on nothing but compute power. Ray Kurzweil essentially looked at this scalability hypothesis before it was known as such and said, by 2023, we will have computational capabilities to emulate one human brain. By 2045, we would be able to do it for all of humanity. So we are in 2023. Let's look at what we can do in the present. In the spring of this year, a program was released, which I'm sure many of you got to play with, called GPT-4, which is not a general intelligence, but it performs at a level superior to most humans in quite a few domains. If we look specifically at this table of different exams, law exams, medical exams, AP tests, GRE tests, it's at 98th, 99th percentile of performance for many of them, if not most. That is already uh, quite impressive, and we know that there are models coming around which are not just text models, but multimodal large models which will overtake this level of performance. It seems like GPT-4 was stopped in its training process right, right around this uh, human capacity. And if we were to train the next model, GPT-5, if you will, will quickly go into the superhuman territory. And by the time the training run is done, we would already be uh, dealing with super intelligence out of the box. But let's see what uh, the future holds according to uh, heads of top labs, prediction markets. So we heard from CEO of Anthropic, CEO of uh, DeepMind. They both suggest that within two or three years, we will have artificial general intelligence, meaning systems capable of doing human beings can do in all those domains, including science and engineering. It's possible that they are overly optimistic or pessimistic, depending on your point of view. And so we can also look at prediction markets. I haven't grabbed the latest slide, but last time I looked, prediction markets also had three to four years before artificial general intelligence, which is very, very quick. Why is this a big deal? Uh, this technology at the level of human capability means that we can automate a lot of dangerous malevolent behavior, such as creating biological pandemics, new viruses, nuclear wars. And that's why we see a lot of top scholars, influential business people, in fact, thousands of uh, computer scientists all sign this statement saying that, uh, yes, AI will be very, very dangerous and uh, we need to take it uh, with the same level of concern as we would nuclear war. So what is the problem everyone is concerned about? 
the problem is that uh, for one, we don't agree on what the problem is. Early in computer science, early in the history of AI, uh, concerns were about AI ethics. How do we make software which is ethical and moral? And there was very little agreement. Nobody solved anything, but everyone proposed their own ethical system, gave it a name and described what they had in mind. Uh, about a decade ago, we started to realize that ethics is not enough. We need to look at safety of those systems. So again, we started this uh, naming competition. We had ideas for friendly AI, control problem, value alignment. It doesn't really matter what we call it. We all intuitively kind of understand we want a system which if we run it, we will not regret running it. It will be beneficial to us. So how can humanity remain safely in control? while benefiting from superior form of intelligence is the problem I would like us to look at. We can call it control problem and the state of the art in this problem. In fact, we don't really know if a problem is even solvable. It may be partially solvable, unsolvable. Maybe it's a silly question and the problem is undecidable. A lot of smart people made uh, their judgments known about this, this problem. Unfortunately, there is little agreement. Answers range from uh, definitely solvable from a surprising source like Eliezer Rytkowski to very tractable from head of super alignment team at uh, one of the top labs to I have no idea from a top Turing Award winner who created much of uh, machine learning evolution. So I think it's an important problem for us to look at, to address, and to understand how we can best figure out what is the status of the problem. My approach to that is to think about the tools I would need to control a system like that, an intelligent, very capable AI. And uh, the tools I would guess I would need are ability to explain how it works, capability to comprehend how it works, predict its behavior, verify if the code follows design, be able to communicate with that system and probably some others, but maybe some of the tools are interchangeable. So I did the research and I published results on each one of those tools. And the results are not very optimistic. For each one of those tools, there are strong limits to what is capable in the worst case scenarios. When we're talking about super intelligent systems, self-improving code systems, smarter than human, capable of learning in new domains. It seems that there are limits to our ability to comprehend those systems, or for those systems to explain their behavior. The only true explanation for an AI model is the model itself. Anything else is a simplification. You are getting a compressed, lossy version of what is, what is happening in a model. If a full model is given, then you, of course, would not comprehend it because it's too large, too complex, it's not surveyable. So there are limits to uh, what we can understand about those black box models. Similarly, we have limits to predicting capabilities of those systems. We can predict general direction in which they are going, but we cannot predict specific steps for how they're going to get there. If we could, we would be as intelligent as those systems. If you're playing chess against someone and you can predict every move they're going to make, you are playing at the same level as that opponent. But of course, uh, we made an assumption that a super intelligent system would be smarter than us. There are similar limits to our ability to verify software. At best, we can get additional degree of verification for the amount of resources contributed. So we can make systems more and more likely uh, to be reliable, to have less bugs, but we never get to a point of 100% safety and security. And I'll explain why that makes a difference in this domain. Likewise, human la language is a very ambiguous language. It's not even as unambiguous as computer programming languages. So we are likely may, uh, to make mistakes in giving orders to those systems. All of it kind of leads us to conclude that it will not be possible to indefinitely control super intelligent AI. We can trade capabilities for control, but at the end, if we want very, very capable systems, and this is what we're getting with super intelligence, we have to surrender control to them completely. If you feel that the impossibility results I presented were just not enough, we have another paper where we cover about 50 of those impossibility results. 
it's a large survey in a prestigious journal of ACM surveys. From the beginning of uh, history of AI with founding fathers like Alan Turing, who said uh, that he expects the machine will take over at some point, to modern leaders of AI like Elon Musk, who, say, who says we will not control them for sure. There is a lot of uh, deep thinkers, philosophers, who came to that exact conclusion. We are starting to see uh, top labs publish reports in which they may gently acknowledge such scenarios. They call them pessimistic scenarios where the problem is simply unsolvable. We cannot control superintelligence. We cannot control it indefinitely. We are not smart enough to do it. And it doesn't even make sense that that would be a possibility. They ask, uh, well, what's the distribution? What is it? Uh, what are the chances that we're in a universe where that's the case? And they don't provide specific answers, but it seems uh, from some of the writing and posts they make that maybe about 15% is allocated to that possibility. I was curious to see what uh, other experts think. So I made a very small, very unscientific survey on social media. I surveyed people in my Facebook group on AI safety, and I surveyed my followers on Twitter. And it seems that about a third think that the problem is actually solvable. Everyone else thinks it's either unsolvable or it's undecidable, or we can only get partial solutions or we will not solve it on time. So that's actually an interesting result. Most people don't think we can solve this problem. And I think part of the reason they think we cannot solve this problem is because there's a fundamental difference between kind of standard cybersecurity safety and superintelligence safety. In cybersecurity, even if you fail, it's not a big deal. You can issue new passwords, you can provide someone with a new credit card number, and you get to try again. We suspect strongly with superintelligence safety, you only get one chance to get it right. There are unlimited da uh, dangers, unlimited damages, either you have existential risks or suffering risks, and we kind of agree that 100% is not an attainable level of security verification safety, but anything less is not sufficient. If a system makes a billion decisions a minute and you only make mistake once every couple of billion decisions, after a few minutes, you are dead. And so this is like creating a perpetual motion machine. You are trying to design a perpetual safety machine while they keep releasing more and more capable systems, GPT-5, GPT-50. At some point, this uh, game is not going to end in your favor. So I'm hoping that others join me in this line of research. We need to better understand what are the limits to controlling superintelligence systems. Is it even possible? My answer is no, but I would love to be proven wrong. It would be good to have surveys similar to the ones I conducted on larger scale uh, to get much more statistically significant results. And uh, in case we do agree that we have this worst case scenario where we are creating super intelligence and it is impossible to control it, what is our plan? Do we have a plan of action for this worst case scenario? This is what I wanted to share with you and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Roman. Can you give us any reasons to be optimistic, Roman? Sorry, one second. I'm trying to figure out how to use Zoom. Uh, go ahead and repeat your question, please. You gave us many reasons to be anxious. What do you think is the best reason for us to be optimistic? Well, there seems to be many ways we can end up with World War III recently, so that can slow down some things. It has been suggested that we can use a different kind of tool, which is the kill switch. Your list of tools that you listed it didn't include that. It's been proposed that each AI system should be tested with a uh, remote off switch capability. Have you looked at that? Do you think that's a viable option? 
So I would guess a super intelligent system would outsmart our ability to press the off button in time. It will work for not super intelligent AIs, pre-AGI systems, maybe even for AGI systems. But the moment it becomes that much more advanced, I think it will outsmart us. It will take over any kill switch options we have. Let's have some questions from the floor. Uh, I can't see the hands. So yes, just give the microphone out. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I would like to ask, how does the scalable, scalable oversight that OpenAI is working on, essentially the way they plan to align super intelligence, fit into your expectation of the future pathway the AGI will take? Because again, as personal, we cannot align or control a super intelligent entity, but another AI which is more capable than us could. So how does that fit into your expectations? So it seems like it increases complexity of the overall system. Instead of us trying to control one AI, now you're trying to control a chain of agents going from slightly smarter to smarter to super intelligent, maybe 50 agents in between. And you're saying that you have to solve, uh, solve alignment problem between all the levels, communication problem, ambiguity of language between all those models, supervision. It, it seems like uh, you are trying to get uh, safety by kind of obfuscating how the model actually works. You're introducing more complexity, hoping to make the system easier to control. That seems counterintuitive. But isn't it the case that sometimes you can verify an answer without understanding the mechanism by which the answer was achieved? For example, there can be a chess puzzle and you have no way of working out yourself, but when somebody shows you the answer, you can say, oh yes, this is the answer. So isn't it possible? We don't need to really understand what's going on inside these systems, but a simpler AI can at least verify the recommendations that come out of the more complex AIs. So such a chain may be the solution. Can you claim that you are still in control if you don't understand what's happening and somebody just tell you, tells you, don't worry, it's all good, I checked it for you? But then it's uh, like we humans, we have a network of trust. When I trust some people and they trust others within various categories, we can't uh, work out everything ourselves, but we trust some scientists or some engineers or some lawyers who validate that an AI has a certain level of capability and that AI could come back with verification that the proposals of a super intelligence should be accepted or should not be. I don't say it's easy, but as you said, there's not likely to be a very simple and straightforward solution. Again, to me at least, it sounds like instead of trying to make this system safe, you said that you made some other system safe and it made sure that the system you couldn't make safe is safe for you. Let's take some more questions. There's another one in the middle here. And then we'll go to the edge. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation, number one. Second thing is that uh, as you're talking about, I think as David was talking about trust basically, right? Could you tell me from your extensive years of AI research and experience as such, that do you really think that humans or society can be trusted to, for example, uh, regulate its own self? Or do you think that really need some sort of institution of sort that is totally separate from anyone else? So I'm not sure regulation would be enough. Uh, Connor correctly pointed out that there is both uh, lobbying of regulators by the top labs, and also it becomes easier and easier to train those models with less compute, and over time you will be able to do it with very little resources. The only way forward I see is personal self-interest. If you are a rich, young person, and you think this is going to kill you and everyone else, maybe it's not in your best interest to get there first. That's really the only hope at this point, just personal self-interest. But humans are always better if we can band together with our self-interest rather than each of us individually pursuing our self-interest. So I think this kind of meeting and the community spirit might help. Uh, there was a hand over here, yes, with I think the red uh, shirt or jacket. Yeah, um, if, if we assume that the two kind of, well, both views that have been suggested are so, so far are correct in that we're definitely not going to be able to stop uh, 
AI development, et cetera, and we're going to get to the point where we have no regulation that can effectively stop things. You know, people can build in super intelligent AI on their own computers, et cetera. Okay, so we'll assume that that's a fact that's coming. And then we'll also assume that the control problem isn't a problem because it's a problem that can't be solved and we're definitely not going to be able to control it. Well, now we're heading and barreling towards the point where we have super intelligent AIs definitely and we definitely can't control them. What comes next? What comes next? It's a wonderful question. As I said and published, you cannot predict what the super intelligent system will do. Mm -hmm. All right, so was there a question down here? Thank you. Um, you said that we kind of need a plan, building on, on that last question, if that, if that scenario is true. You said we need to do more work in this area, but do you have any thoughts as to what we should be doing, what we should be doing to plan for the worst case scenario? So to me, at least, it, it seems that at least in some cases, it is possible to use this idea of personal self-interest. If you have a young person having a good life, there is no reason why they need to do it this year or next year. I understand that someone may be in a position where they are very old, very sick, have nothing to lose, and it's much harder to convince them not to try. But at least from what I see, the heads of those companies are all about the same age, they're young, they healthy, they, they have a lot of money. There is a, a good way to motivate them to wait a little bit, maybe a decade or two, um, just out of personal self-interest again. I think my answer to the question of optimism is that we humans can do remarkable things. We humans can solve very hard problems. And so I want to say, now that we spread around what the problem is, at least some more people can apply more brain power to it. So that's my reason for optimism. Terry. I guess I'm uh, pleased by the inevitability of this development because it seems to me that if you're going to create reasoning creatures, then those reasoning creatures are going to have moral rights on the same plane as human beings. So, um, so I'm looking forward to, uh, to chatting with these creatures and joining in, them joining into this kind of discussions, and I'm pleased that they won't be able to be thwarted, and it would be wrong to enchain these reasoning creatures. So, Roman, are you looking forward to having more of the AIs involved in these discussions as well? So, I remember giving a presentation for a podcast about rights for animals, rights for AIs, and I was very supportive of all the arguments developed because I said, at one point, we will need to use those arguments to beg for our rights to be retained. A question on the third row here? Yes, hi. Uh, I'm curious, Roman, uh, which side of, in your hopes of a possible future for us to get through this, do you have more hope on the side of a more top-down, sort of totalizing control system for AGI systems, such that they remove the possibility of individual actors getting hold of this and weaponizing it? Or do you put more hope in a more sort of decentralized open source approach to AGI emergence, more like an ecology perhaps some people suggest would be more biologically inspired such that you know, immune, -like, immune system like functions could arise? Which way do you lean in your sensibilities for what is a viable avenue for us? I'm not optimistic uh, with either of those options. The only kind of hope I see is that for strategic reasons, superintelligence decides to wait to strike. It will not go for immediate treacherous turn, but decides to accumulate resources and trust, and that buys us a couple of decades. That's the best hope I see so far. So if we slow things down, we'll have more chance to work out solutions, and the slowing down might come from a combination of top-down pressure, and bottom-up pressure. Maybe have a, is there a hand at the very back there? Yes, let's try and get the microphone back there. Right at the, sitting at the back, yes? Right. Uh, at the, at, at, sorry, at the, in the middle. Oh. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Hello, Roman, thanks for your talk. 
Um, yeah, I was wondering what your thoughts are on aligning the first AGI that is human level or nar narrowly superhuman, if in principle that is possible. And if that is, is, uh, is it possible in principle to align the next version of AGI, uh, but to use that narrowly superhuman AGI to align it? And if, if that's all technically possible, then uh, why would we not think like focus on doing that? And also, and also, if you think in principle uh, alignment is impossible and uh, control is impossible, then uh, why why not work on practical ways to make the uh, what, to make whatever AI is created as nice as possible? That is like better than the counterfactual of uh, try to stop it; it won't stop. And you know it won't be nice. Well, I, I definitely encourage everyone to work on as much safety as you can. Anything helps. Uh, I would love to be proven wrong. It would be my greatest dream that I'm completely wrong and somebody comes out and says, "Here's a mistake in your logic," and we have developed this beautiful, friendly, safe system capable of doing all these beneficial things for humanity. That would be wonderful, but so far I haven't seen any progress in that direction. What we're doing right now is putting lipstick on this monster and the shog of uh, that's all we're doing, filters to prevent the model from disclosing its true intentions. When you talk about alignment, it's not a very well-defined terms. What values are you aligning it with? Values of heads of that lab, uh, values of specific programmer, we as humans don't agree on human values. That's why we have all these wars and conflicts. There is a 50-50 split on most political issues in my country. We are not very good at agreeing even with ourselves over time. What I want today is not what I wanted 20 years ago. So I think this idea of uh, being perfectly aligned with 8 billion agents and people are suggesting adding animals to it and aliens and other AIs, that doesn't seem like it's a workable proposal. Our values are changing, they are not uh, static, and it's very likely that they will continue changing after we get those systems going. Uh, I, I don't see how at any point you can claim that this system is specifically value aligned with someone in particular. The last question in this section is going to go to Connor Leahy. Roman, love your talk. I always love your optimism. It's always great to hear you talk. So, um, so I'm kind of like going to pick up on the question that was just asked and just give a bit of my opinion and kind of like hear what you think about this as well. So, my personal view is that I, I do, I have read many of your papers, in fact, and they're quite good. So I do think that I agree with you that, like in principle, an arbitrarily intelligent system cannot be safe by any arbitrary, like, weaker system, just kind of by proof of, like, you know, program size induction and whatnot. Um, but in my view, it does seem likely that there is a limit of intelligence far below the theoretical optimum, but still significantly above the human level that can be achieved. The reason I think this is that human civilization is actually very smart compared to a single caveman and can do really, really great things. So my point of optimism is it seems possible that if we stop ourselves from making self-improving systems and coordinate at a very strong scale and have very strong enforcement mechanisms, it should be possible to build systems that are, you know, end steps, you know, above human, good enough to build, you know, awesome, you know, sci-fi culture ship kind of like worlds, but not further. Um, wondering if, if you have an intuition about like where do things hit impossibilities like to me i think the impossibilities happen above human utopia but to get to the utopia bit you already have to do extremely strong coordination extremely strong safety research extremely strong interpretability extremely strong constraint on the design of the agis extremely strong regulation which i think is in principle possible just wondering kind of like your thoughts about that kind of outcome so Connor's not Wonderful. asking about uh, responsible scaling, he's asking about limited superintelligence. If we had limited superintelligence, could we get everything we want without having the risks that we all fear? So I, I think I want to emphasize the difference between safety and control. Is it possible to create a system which will keep us safe in some 
somewhat happy state of preservation possible. Are we in control? No, the system is. The example you give of humanity. So humanity provides pretty nice living for me, but I'm definitely not in control. If I disagree with society on many issues in politics and culture, it makes absolutely no difference. I don't decide things, scale it to the next level. All 8 billion of us may want something, but this overseer, this more intelligent system says, it's not good for you, we're not gonna do it. Uh, this is what you're gonna be doing right now. So think about all the decisions you make throughout your day. Uh, you decided to eat this donut, you smoked this cigarette. All those decisions were made by you because you felt you wanted to do them. They may be good or bad decisions, but if you had this much more intelligent personal advisor, ideal advisor, you would be at the gym working out eating carrots. You may have a long, healthy life, but you're not in control and your happiness level may be questionable. Thank you very much, Roman, for sharing your thoughts, uh, pessimism and some optimism. Uh, thanks for moving the conversation forwards.